Hey, what's up guys? Today we're gonna do a quick uh, how to install BC Racing coilovers video on an E36. So uh, I got my BC Racing coilovers in from BC. Thank you so much, BC. And I'm gonna install them on my wagon. I keep saying wagon, I don't know why. My sedan right behind me. So uh, we're gonna do a quick little how to. It's super simple. Uh, we're gonna start with the rear, which is quite a bit easier than the front. So uh, step one is pull all the junk out of the trunk because we need to uh, get the carpet back so that we can get to the upper shock towers to re release the uh, shocks. So let's get started. All right, so we also have to get into the rear interior and remove the parcel shelf because we have to get these speakers out. And I believe the attachment for them is on the top. So I think we got to pop these covers off, get those bolts out, and that way we can get these boxes out of the way and uh, get to the shock tower bolts which are right here there's two of them per uh, once we get access to those we'll be in good shape all right next part is much easier if you have fold down seats fold down your rear seats and then you need to pull the side cushions so to those oh this one's already popped loose you just pull forward basically it's got the retaining clip here that goes over that and this one slides down into that so you pull forward at the top and then slide up okay so this one should be free it's stuck on something right here what is that mm -hmm. i don't know oh oh damn it okay got it so this hole goes over a pin there you have to kind of pull it out and over that. So now I have both of those out. And next step is to get this plastic piece off because then we have to uh, remove the parcel deck by pulling it up. So looks like this pin's already missing on this side. On the other side, I believe I saw a pin. Man, this is dirty. It's never been vacuumed or anything. There's a pin. And one more here. So we'll pull these out with a screwdriver, pull this panel off. And then we should be able to get the parcel deck up to expose the speaker mounts. All right, got those body clips out, got this plastic panel off. Now this thing should be able to pop up except for the C-pillar trim is blocking. So these actually need to be popped out first with the light disconnected. And then I think we're, we're free. So let's try that next. All right, I got those pieces out. Unfortunately, as I expected, a couple of the tabs broke on each one they clip into these metal body clips right here as you can see that one broke out and that one broke out and then there was two more similar on the same side on the other side um it's kind of just to be expected with old plastic unfortunately so i'll see if i can get replacements if not i'll just try to do my best to resecure those in and wash my damn hands I actually want to convert the interior of this thing to black anyway because it's got a, a black parcel shelf, black seats, black dash, but gray uh, otherwise. So I would like to convert it all to black. So maybe that'll be a project for another day. Um, now, yep, yeah, the shelf is loose now. So I think we can begin to pry it up. I just need to see what's holding it at the back, if anything, and go from there. Able to very carefully pry it up and now it's coming forward we've got some kind of hornet or something dead up there and a bee. Got a foam pad there okay so now we've got the support stuff and sound deadening what we really need to get to are these screws for the speaker so we can drop that down and get to the shock mounts so let's uh remove these phillips i think there's three of them Go from there. All right, so you remove the two Phillips. There's one here and one here. And there's a tiny little clip on this side that you have to push inwards to get that side to release. And then it goes toward the inner side of the car because there's this little plastic clip that goes over the top there. So now, once you get that clip loose, you should just be able to pull it down like this. And that's it. So the speaker's out. Now we can pull the carpet back real quick. Okay, let's see here. 
gummy off. And there's the shock mount. So it's uh, two 12s or 13s, I can't remember. But we just need to get to those bolts on each side and then we're done with the rear pretty much. That's the, well, that's the only tricky part is getting this apart correctly without breaking everything. So looks like on the passenger side, I have to remove the CD changer because this car had a CD changer and uh, you can't slide this speaker toward the inside of the car without removing this. So it's a couple of Phillips on each side and then I unplug the electrical. We'll drop that down and be able to get this one out. All right. All right, I've jacked up the rear of the car. I've got the wheels off. It is safely supported on jack stands. Now, for those of you who don't know about E36s, they don't have a true coilover in the rear unless you convert them. So they have an inboard spring. The spring just sits on the control arm, and the upper control arm, and then you have the shock attached to the knuckle via this bolt here. So all you have to do to remove the, uh, essentially change out the rear coilover is remove the upper two bolts, remove this bolt, the whole thing will drop down, then you just pull the spring out because it will be completely loose in here. Once the arm drops low enough, it can just fall out. Put the new spring in, bolt up the new shock up top, and then you jack up the knuckle until it lines up here. This is actually kind of interesting. I don't know, I have never seen a nut on the backside of the shock before, so I don't know if this is something that was rigged or just 325 rear knuckles are like this, but that's kind of weird looking. Um, let's see if the other side has that. Okay. The other side does not have that, which leads me to believe something was damaged. And maybe they drilled it all the way through or changed the bolt or something. So that's kind of interesting. To be continued. All right, so I decided to start on this side since this is the side that doesn't have the screwed up knuckle. Um, I don't know what happened on the other side. Fortunately, it doesn't really matter because it got all M3 rear end stuff for this. So this is all going to get replaced with M3 rear stuff very shortly. But regardless, I need to have the shock installed. The main point being the upper shock mounts, which are going to get covered back up by carpet. So um, I want to go ahead and get those installed. And um, then we'll worry about swapping out this other stuff. So the damaged knuckle, I'm not worried about because like I said, I've got M3 stuff for it so I can use M3 axles. So let's, uh, I, I disconnected the, or I let down the e-brake rather because usually that prevents it from drooping far enough to get the spring out. But I noticed it's still not really drooping far enough for the spring to be able to pull out. And that's because it still has a rear sway bar. So I'm gonna be disconnecting that. Probably not this second. I'm probably just gonna pry the spring out just to get this uh, done or maybe I'll just pry it out and then disconnect the bar once I have more access. We'll see. It's a pretty funny comparison between the factory shock and the BC. Look how much beefier this thing is. Much nicer. Sweet. All right, I got the new BC um, mounted up in there. It's helpful to have a friend do this, um, hold the shock up for you while you get the upper nuts. But if you don't have any friends, good old trusty Jack will do. Uh, nice, so we got that up there. Now I just need to jack up the knuckle a little bit so we can get this up to that eyelet and reinstall the 18 millimeter. And then we will be done with this side. Also, while jacking up the knuckle, don't forget to push the spring slightly in as you do so, so that it catches that upper uh, perch nipple thing and one more thing your upper bolts on E36s or the nuts rather are 13 millimeter stock if you go with BCs they're gonna be 12 so don't try to round them off with a 13 make sure you grab a 12 socket once you get the new one in there all right let's get this knuckle reattached and we'll be done with this side all right, also you guys, I'm gonna preach this almost every time I do a video, put anti-seize on your bolts. If you want to remove them later, especially if you live in inclement weather where there's like salt on the roads or a whole bunch of water, different materials that are screwed into each other will seize up and then you can't remove them. So even though I know I'm gonna remove the shock bolt pretty soon to swap out for M3 stuff, I'm still gonna go ahead and anti-seize it. It's just good practice, just do it. It only takes like 20 more seconds, do it. 
we got one side complete. Spring is in, the new BC's in, uh, upper mount's in, all that good stuff, reach attached at the knuckle. One thing I did not mess with was uh, shock height, which will affect spring preload and a couple of other things. So mainly the goal right now is to get all the coilovers on, uh, see what it looks like, and then go start nitpicking ride height, spring preload, all sorts of other adjustments. So we've got one corner down, we'll repeat on the other side, and we'll be finished with the back. Let's get this stock crap off of this side. Oh boy, some people never cease to amaze me and they should just not work on cars. So this lower shock bolt, which is not stuck in my wrench now, um, I found out why it had a nut on the back side. There's no threads left in there. So somebody, I guess, cross-threaded it and then decided, well, let's just drill it all the way through and then tighten it really snugly. Hopefully that'll hold it in, in place. So I'm glad I'm not using these knuckles. Um, I'll just throw it back on with this bolt for now, just so I, well, with the BC, so I can at least see what it looks like in the back at this ride height and stuff. But yeah, this is garbage. Don't do that shit. If you don't know how to work on cars, leave it to people who know how, please. All right, so I just said in a clip a second ago that I wasn't gonna adjust the rear shock length. I was just gonna see how it looks. But after jacking up this side, I realized that I'm gonna have to compress the spring over an inch or so to get it lined up to the shock, which is quite a bit of preload. So I'm actually gonna set it to where the spring is just barely, just barely has any compression on it and then adjust the shock length so that it lines up there. So we have a lot less preload to start with. Hopefully it'll be a little bit more compliant over bumps and stuff. Cause uh, the more preload you have, the more force it takes to actually move the spring um, beyond its static ride height. So. Let's uh, loosen this collar and then we'll spin this down a little bit until it lines up with this point. And we'll do the same on the other side. All right, I got this side back together. I adjusted the shock a good bit longer so that it has basically no spring preload on this side. And as you can see, this is at full droop. It's got, you know, a hand width, my hand width there. If you go to the other side where I actually had it preloaded a bit and didn't adjust the shock, does not have it's got like three fingers not all the way a um, little bit less droop on this side so I'm gonna undo the shock and spin it down so that it's adjusted to the same length as the other one so that we have essentially no preload on both sides and we'll start from that that'll be our starting point in the back and then we'll move and go ahead and do the fronts all right got the shock length and the spring preload set on both sides Man, fresh new parts look so much better than all this old dirty stuff. Can't wait to refresh all the bushings and things in here too. I'm gonna do ev absolutely every single bushing. So that's coming up soon. Cool, let's see what it looks like on the ground. Well, we're losing daylight fast, but the rear looks really good. I'm super happy with that fitment. It's tucked and tired just a little bit, but not too aggressive to where it's not gonna rub or anything. Um, that's with the spring with no ride height adjuster in it, just the spring, the rubber perches and stuff to dampen the vibrations. So overall, very happy with that. Now onto the front. I'm gonna have to get some spotlights out here tonight because daylight savings time is not doing me any favors as far as car work in the evenings. But here goes the front. Alrighty, so we've got the front in the air. And I totally forgot, I already put on 95M3 uh, knuckles and brakes and everything on this car. These are off my other car because for my angle kit on my coupe, I had to switch to a non-M knuckle. So I took these off and put my M knuckles on here. So I've already got stainless brake lines, M3 brakes, some studs uh, to remove the strut assembly up the top. It's just the three 13 millimeter nuts on the strut housing tower, whatever you want to call it. And then there's two, there's one cross bolt with a nut here and then two lower 18 millimeters down there. And that's it and the strut will come out. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop it out and show you. All right, we got the old strut out. It's just two 18 millimeter bolts down here and then one 18 millimeter bolt here and a nut that attached to the knuckle. There's the upper point and then there's two lower ones down there. And then the three 
13 millimeters on the shock tower and the old junk is out. So now you have to replace it with the nice shiny new stuff from BC. So let's do that. Side switch here. Okay. This is front left. So that's what we want. Yep. Okay. Sweet. Let's put it in. Alrighty. Well, we got one side finished. The new coilover is installed. Have not set the height yet. Um, and yeah, I guess that's it. We just got to repeat for the other side and then I'm going to put the wheels on, put it on the ground, see what it looks like and then adjust the front height. So let's tackle the other side real quick and go from there. Alrighty, well we got the front right finished up. Now time to put the wheels on, uh, let it down on the front and check the right height. So, whew, another breath. Um, yeah, we'll get that done and then we'll adjust from there just to make it look perfect. And stay tuned. Alrighty, well here's what it looks like currently. That's the back with uh, no height adjuster, just the spring and then the rubber pads uh, to dampen some of the vibration and noise. Just because, I, like I said, this is going to be a street car. And then here's the front without adjusting anything. Um, right off the bat I can tell the camber is close to zero. The plates are kind of in the middle. So I'll be slotting those toward negative a little bit. And I'm probably going to drop the front maybe about an inch. Because I want it to have good fitment. Um, but still be very functional. So it's not going to be extremely low. It'll probably never be lower than this in the rear. Just because I want to be able to do flares later. And clear a big 265 and all that. Um, so for now, I'm going to camber in the front and lower the front one inch and then we'll take a look again all right i lowered this uh front left corner one inch on the spring and that looks pretty decent it's mostly level now but with the e36 arches it basically makes the rear look lower than the front i'm probably gonna lower this just a hair more maybe and i cambered it in I forgot these are some low offset 5 series wheels, that's why they have so much poke anyway. So this is not a normal E36 fitment. Um, but yeah, pretty happy with that. Maybe like an, a tiny, tiny bit more, but honestly I want to keep it functional and everything, so I don't want to go too low. But looks way, way better than before. Alright, well I think I'm pretty happy with the ride height. I know it's not slammed, but it's tucking tire a little bit in the back. And then we've got a little bit of room up here. Once I get the final wheel choice up front with the front tire and the angle kit, then I'll be able to finalize that fitment a little bit better. But overall, looks pretty dang good. So much better than stock. Much more aggressive looking, even with these very mundane wheels. So, um, BC coilovers are on. Next step, I gotta source a manual and start putting the turbo kit on so we can get this thing done. So I've got some really, really exciting events coming up next year, and this thing needs to be ready. So stay tuned for that and more videos. All right, I'm gonna close this video out here, you guys. Thanks so much for watching. That's how to install BC Racing coilovers on E36. Um, if you unfortunately have a few mishaps like mine did with the drilled out knuckle and whatnot, you know, I guess that's to be expected with cars that are this old. So uh, hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you now know how to take apart the rear at least and get to the upper shock mounts without breaking stuff and all that. Um, and that's just basic setup. I also talked a little bit about spring preload, but we won't go into suspension specifics uh, tonight. So thanks for watching and see you guys next time. Oh, one more thing, you guys. If you have any comments or questions or anything on the video style, or if you know what that little thing in the trunk was next to the CD changer, be sure to leave them in the comments below. I really appreciate the feedback, and it helps me improve these videos for you guys. So thanks, and see you next time.